this mirrorless camera can be had for cheaper than some expensive webcams. And I'm going to show you how to make it work with a computer to be used like a webcam, but on steroids. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. In my last video, I talked about how this camera, the Sony A5000, can be the most affordable mirrorless camera that you can get to be used as a webcam on your computer for streaming, Zoom calls, Discord, or whatever. I did mention that there's a hack when doing it like that though, and all you had to do is a quick hack to the software of the camera, and then you're pretty much good to go. But in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly the steps that you need to take in order to get that hack done. It's really easy. Just follow along. Also, I'll have the written instructions down in the description below. And if you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below and I'll see what I can do to help you guys out. Anyways, let's get to that tutorial. OK, so here we are at the desktop and it's time to do the hack to get this camera to work better as a stream cam, clean HDMI out, and I guess it unlimited record limit, but you know, I guess that's to make sure that it just stays on and doesn't shut off while you're using it as a stream camera. So I have the steps outlined right here. These steps will be down in the description below as well, so you'll be able to refer to them. And all links to download the stuff is also gonna be down there. So one of those things that were downloaded was the PMCA GUI app, which I have right here and then also putty because we'll need to telnet putty is a free sort of command prompt looking thing it's a, a terminal is what it's called and the installer will also be linked down below you install it then you get putty okay so going along with the steps i'm going to take the camera and i'm going to plug it in because i already downloaded the uh, pmca gui app or gui some people say i just like saying gui and uh, now it says click get camera info to the ensure computer she's your camera i guess we have to open the pmc gui pmc GUI. so let's double click that and open it up so the step three says click get camera info let's do that and uh, no device is found let's turn the camera on so pretty important thing i guess to be aware of is have the camera turned on while you're going through this process now i'm going to click get camera info again and now found it from a version 1.1.0. I think we'll be okay here. And then now it says to go to the install tab. And uh, there is a menu below with the list of apps that can be installed. Open memories tweak should be the first one. So open memories tweak. Let's find that list. There it is, open memories tweak. So that we select the open memories tweak button and then you click the install selected app button. Camera's doing a thing right now. Don't touch the camera. You don't want to wiggle the uh, the cable while it's doing any of this. Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, I've waited for the installation to complete. I'm going to come back to this tab and hit get camera info and uh, make sure that it's still recognized there. Now, the camera still says application download connecting via USB to change the USB connection mode. Disconnect the USB, USB cable from the computer and reconnect. The steps say to remove the USB cable on step seven there. So let's go ahead and unplug the cable. Now on the camera, after unplugging it, after going through those steps, it says to find the apps tab and then we're gonna click the open memories tweak. So I'm gonna click menu and uh, there's application, which is right there. You can see it'll be in the bottom, what is it, bottom left, right there, I'm pointing right at it here. And we're gonna click that and open memories tweak should be in here under application list. I do that and open memories tweak is right there. So I'm just selecting it and then going through, I'm going to click into open memories tweak. And uh, at least in this one says in the video tab, disable record limit. Okay, let's do that. And so I just pushed the button on the right of the spinning thing here to go to the video tab and then I wheel it down and I see that disable video recording limit is highlighted. Going to press that and now that is check marked. Now it says to go over to the developer tab. So I'm going to go over there and we're going to enable Wi-Fi. We're also going to be enabling uh, Telnet. Enable ADB is also an option there. This is just not something that I think we need to do. Now I'm going to continue down to Wi-Fi settings on the camera. 
and right here in Wi-Fi settings now I'm going to do access point set because I'm going to make it scan for my Wi-Fi and put it on you're going to want to do the same for you guys and so I've inputted my Wi-Fi information it is now saying that it's connecting and uh, let's just make sure that it connects bam connected now it shows an IP address right there so it'll show an IP address for you and that's where the next part of this uh, that's where that's going to come in handy <laughs> and now this is where I have to open putty because that's where we're gonna do the telnet thing that I mentioned earlier. We're gonna go here, the right where it opens to basically, and uh, hostnet, let's see. So host name or IP address is where you put that IP address that it shows on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one. It also tells you what port to put here. So you, you can see there it says port right next to it. So I'm gonna put port and in this case it's 23. It is going to go through telnet and I'm gonna click open and you get this terminal that opens up. I made a quick mistake when actually connecting with PuTTY. Um, when under connection type, after typing the IP address and the port that it shows on the camera right there, where connection type is, you do there's SSH, there's serial, and then there's other, and then that's when you mark Telnet. Specifically, that's what we want to use. So now that the IP address and port are there, and you've clicked other and mark Telnet, we're going to click open. And now it's ready. So basically, the trick here is turning the overlays that make it clean HDMI off and on zero is i believe going to be off in this case and one is on and so we got to input the commands which will be down in the description below so you want to copy paste them so you don't get them wrong so i'm just going to take it from here so it says here in the in the instructions we're going to type this command and if we type this command and press enter then we should get a one which means overlays are on so i'm going to paste that there it is and we get a zero one, just like the instructions say. So uh, now we're gonna do this other command below it. And now it reported a zero zero. Okay, so now let's double check because now that we've done zero zero, that means the overlays out of HDMI have been turned off. So let's check again by copying that first command that's just the check for that. And in this case in Putty, I'm actually right clicking to paste. I'm not doing like control V or something. It really seems to think right click is paste. I'm not that familiar with Putty. I haven't used it since my early programming days. So yeah, I'm gonna press enter. Now this is returning a zero zero, just like the instructions say. And that's how I know you're good to go for clean HDMI out. So from here, it says to power down the camera and then power it back on. And you should be able to see right on the screen that it's whether it's going to have overlays or not. So let's do that. Now it says switch to movie mode on the instructions to see the output without any overlays. And uh, well, movie mode on this camera is a button that just starts recording. Maybe there's something in the menu to actually turn it into like actual movie mode. Yes, it is. So you go into the menu, you go into shoot mode, and then you go to movie. And once selected, uh, we're gonna go with full manual because we need full manual control if it's gonna be more stream related. And, um, I still have overlays. <laughs> but with all that done, I have a $15 cheap capture card. So let's get this hooked up and see how it actually looks. So I actually have it connected now. You can see it right here in front of me on the little tripod on the desk. And moment of truth, bam. And I made a few adjustments, mostly just adding a little bit of sharpness, which is something I like to do with any camera through a capture card because I just like that clinically sharp look. Um, and as you can see, this looks pretty good and now this 100 and well i ended up paying 120 dollars for this a5000 with not even like a few minutes worth of work here we are clean hdmi out i gotta say though so far it's looking good and it's definitely worthwhile if you can find an a5000 for cheap to do this with especially with this lens which is nice and cheap as well 100 bucks 16 millimeter f 2.8 you get a nice little bit of background blur not too much you know some people like to show off what's in the background but you also want it to have a little bit of separation this kind of accomplishes that so fantastic lens used to be my main lens as a matter of fact and uh well yeah quick little note i wanted to see how the camera would behave if i turn it off and then back on to see if it'd go right back to this since i'm leaving it in movie mode because that's how it works with my a5100 but let me show you what happens so camera goes off, I'm gonna turn it back on and it's gonna say no memory card. And there you see that, I'm pushed the shutter button and then it's, you can see me again, but oh no, there's a 
there's a box on me now. Well, I'm gonna push the menu button and then I'm going to go to camera setting, shoot mode, movie, and then push the shutter button again, and we're back. No more overlays. So maybe a few more extra steps, but that's fine. That's a good trade-off, just a for a few extra steps, if you ask me. <laughs> and then for the sake of completeness, I put a memory card in. Let's turn it back off. And then we're gonna turn it back on. So the camera went right into the preview window. I'm gonna push the shutter button. And actually that works better. So I guess leave the memory card in there and then you just gotta push the shutter button and we're back to clean HDMI. Glad I tried that. <laughs> and there you have it. If you're seeing this video now and you're not sure which video I'm referencing, it'll be linked right up here or um, on the side somewhere or down in the description below. So make sure you check that out. The, the previous video that I had goes more in depth on testing this, especially versus like a regular webcam and pricing and all that sort of stuff, like what lens to go with and all that. So make sure you check that video out as well. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash Coalition Gaming Crew. So feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk tech, my friends. Speaking of tech and streaming, we've got more videos linked right over there. Full stream setup makeovers, PC builds for gaming and streaming, all that stuff. Check one of those out, and I'll see you in the comments section in one of those videos, yeah? All right. See you guys.